Rob and I were chatting the other day about um, just some great games we played in and uh, I was thinking back to just the most amazing South African Championships game. You know, yes, I've played in some great games in Argentina and things like that, but um, really that for me, I was a young guy um, playing with my dad and, and uh, you know, everybody on that field really was at the top of their game. And uh, we, I had Andrew Erskine playing against me, Sugar Erskine's dad. And uh, he is an absolute robber on the field. He knows how to wind the umpires up. He kind of gets them in his pocket all the time. And uh, you're kind of on that field, they're thinking, you little robber, you. Um, you should have been blown for that. But they never seem to see him because he's so quick, you know. Um, but we played the most amazing game. And actually, it's a game that stands out in my memory because literally eight players on the field were playing really at the top of their game. But what does really playing at the top of your game mean? Because that's the whole point of this free workshop, that there are tactical rules that the top players follow that make them effective on the field, you know? Things like man line ball, man first, line second, ball third. Um, the, and marking at the appropriate player, counting heads on the field, um, that kind of stuff, you know. Are you going to go open side or are you going to protect the line of the ball? Um, in those days, there wasn't a turning rule. Now there is, so you've got to really pay attention to that. You've got to pay attention to the spatial awareness on the field. You've got to be turning before the ball is hit so that when that pass comes, you're already going there, but to get the pass, you have to put yourself in the right place to get the pass. So the old adage and the, um, you know, the, the rule that we work by is be quick without the ball so you have time with the ball. Now, all of those kind of things, those are the tactical rules that all the top players are kind of using all, right, all the time. Um, because without them on the field, you're never really going to be at the top of your game. And uh, this particular game I'm talking about, it was like neck and neck. We were never more than a goal apart. And actually, we ended up losing the game. But it was a game that stands out in my memory because it was just so super. And, and um, we, we just really enjoyed it so much, all of us. And I've done a couple of chats on, you know, um, enjoying your polo. We spend so much time and money actually playing this game and uh, on sportsmanship. And, you know, I can just remember there, you know, making a ride off and hitting a great near side backhand. And uh, whoever it was that I'd made the ride off on saying, gee, good job, chap, well played. And we on to the next play. So... Those are the kind of things for me that stand out and uh, make for great polo. It's not just necessarily all, the, the, all about winning and uh, you know, you're know you out there and it's this professional era. I think you've got to go back and really start to look at the games you really enjoy and find out why you enjoy them. Because again, you know, you can take four really good players all right, and put them together, and they don't function as well as four people that really gel um, in their head um, and, and gel as, as friends on the field that work for each other on the field. And in that particular game, there were eight players out there, boy, and we were busting our guts to really try and work for the other player. It wasn't this selfish polo where I've got the ball and I want the ball and uh, I didn't get it and whinging at the team. All of these things that I've talked about. Now, I love, the, I love the game and I love competing at that level. And I also love the sportsmanship aspect of it and coming off the field having lost and saying, oh my goodness, I love that game. I so enjoyed it. And yeah, on the, on the day, the better team won, you know. We got our butts kicked by a goal and, and we were out of the tournament and uh, putting our horses back on the trucks to go home. But it's still a game that really stands out in my memory. 
And I would really encourage you so much to make use of uh, this free workshop because if you want to participate at that level and you want to really get your polo better, please go to gavsayspoloacademy.com and make use of this free workshop. All this advice and stuff that I'm talking about is there for you for nothing. Okay, you can get onto it and really um, enjoy the video that we put out there. So it, it's just, I, I think that one really needs to, as I've said again and again, if you want to get better, you have to, number one, learn to ride better. You have to train your horses better. You have to be able to get out of your horses what you want them uh, to get out of them. You have to be picking appropriate horses. You have to do all of this kind of stuff. And all of these kind of tips are there in the academy, okay, that uh, I'm wanting people to take notice of and to really get out there and make themselves into better polo players. But I think that the starting point for me is to get onto a free workshop like this and find out what you don't know, all right? Look at the space, you know, the, the rules, the tactical rules that all the top players are using. And when you go and watch the Open, um, it, it's quite strange because I was coaching in Argentina a little while ago. And uh, I took all the guys that I was coaching and we went and watched a semi-final of the Open. And on the trip home, they were just saying, Gab, you know what, they were doing everything you were telling us to do. They just do it faster and better. But that's the point, you know, that um, you, you're not doing anything different at the higher levels that you've been coached to do at the lower levels. We're trying to take you on a step-by-step -step journey to really become really sharp on the field, really a force to be reckoned with on the field. And you need to really start to pay attention not only to the rules of polo, but how to use them, number one, for your own benefit, obviously, and to stay safe, but you need to learn the tactical rules. What should you be doing on the field? How do you get to where you should be getting a pass? You know, um, if you want a tail backhand or an open backhand, when should you be hitting it? When should you not be hitting it? When should, when should you hit an away backhand rather than a tail? All of this kind of stuff. When should you go clockwise and when should you go anti-clockwise? All of these little things are stuff that the, the better players are so aware of kind of subconsciously because they do them all the time okay so uh, yeah guys I just wanted to um, just say hi to you and just really encourage you to um, make use of this free workshop it's not done kind of um, you know for, for any reason other than we want you to get to be better polo players so uh, look forward to seeing you there, look forward to seeing you joining the group and uh, have a great day. I've got to go off and do some more coaching now. I've got uh, all the kids here, we've got our Gold Cup coming up and uh, we've got a children's tournament running at the same time. And my goodness, I tell you what, our youngsters are going along unbelievably. There's no difference in the speed that they play into what the grown-ups are playing and it's really entertaining polo. They know the rules, but they had a lot um, of this whole stuff of how, what should you be doing on the field, you know, why didn't you mark that player, why are you still facing the direction um, you were when the backhand's already been hit, all of that kind of stuff, okay? And uh, you, you know, you, you've got to just get out there and get that done. You've got to anticipate, number one. Don't be going to where the ball is. Going to be going to where the ball is going to. Because otherwise you get into this endless, endless cycle of you're running to where the ball is because that little white magnet drags you there. By the time you get there, it's moved somewhere else. And are you chasing along there? And you look so slow on the field where you, you will just adhere to the number one rule for me of man, line, ball, okay? Beat the man that you're marking. Now figure out what you're gonna do next. Because so often when you've beaten a man, you see your player's gonna um, play, has got the ball. You ask for a tail or open. You've gotta be his eyes. That's another thing, you know? That the man playing the ball 
must give you the ball when you're ready. Polo is an on-demand game, all right? It's not a game that if I've got the ball, I'm going to give it to you when I'm ready to give it to you. No, I'm going to give it to you when you're ready to receive it. It's an on-demand game. These are all the little tips and things that I'm talking about that if you listen to them enough and, and go over them and over them and over them, they will definitely start to make a difference to what you do on the field. But you've got to anticipate, be making the next move. Go to the play that's going to happen, not the play that's already happened. All right, guys, so um, I really hope you enjoy the videos we, we brought you on that pre-workshop, and we'll see you there. Chat again soon.